Hello again everybody, my name is Ryan Olson with Whitebone Creations. Uh, I wanted to touch on one more video. We had such great success in the last couple of skull videos that um, I wanted to do one more uh, addressing some of the comments. So the most frequently asked comment is what do I do in the situation where I have a dead head or a skull I found or something that was my grandparents and I just want to clean it up because they never did what do I do and the other is do you have trouble with grease or oil in pigs and bears and lions and things like that and anything with a big bone structure will have heavy oil content in it and yes I struggle with it and I think everybody struggles with it but I, I've got a remedy today that is the answer actually for both questions um, and I want to cover it first so First and foremost, this is a pig that I believe is a couple years old. Um, gentleman killed it, didn't have a way to deal with it, and he just kind of tied it up in a tree. And you can see that all the tissue is just literally adhered, like it got vacuum sealed and dried to the skull. We can make this skull look as good as anything. Um, you'll have some discoloration naturally for where um, the sunlight came in and made it whiter versus some of the places that's going to have hide underneath it. And according to the tag, this deer was killed in 2013 and like I said, just got left out. So it's, it's just one solid piece. Um, I want to just abbreviate everything real quick. The longer you soak this, the easier it will be. Don't just throw it in the pot and start boiling. I would recommend putting this in a pot and getting it um, soaked for maybe a week, 10 days. Something to really rehydrate and loosen that hide. The other piece that I want you to know is this don't smell bad to me at all. I can't smell anything here because it's dried. But the second you hydrate that rotten flesh, it is going to smell like the devil's armpit. It's going to be horrible. So maybe add a odor band product of some sort, a soap, something to break up that stink. That's what you need to uh, be aware of. So I'm going to get these in a pot. I'm going to give them a big heaping scoop of OxyClean to kind of start tearing down those tissues and parts. And then we'll pick up and revisit for the next process and go from there. Hey, quick side note, just cut off anything you're not going to use or need to soak and remove. I just take a sawzall to those ears so everything fits nice and tight in the pot. Give it a good soak. After you've been soaking a while and you're comfortable with it being loose and removable, make sure you skin everything. Don't ever boil anything with hide on it. It's just going to make it for a very, very difficult removal. And prepare yourself mentally for the stink of a lifetime. It's short-lived, but it's going to smell. Okay, always make sure you're changing your water between boils. So always make sure if the cleaner the skull gets, the fresher your water is. Um, any next step process, change your water. Um, you could see how easy the hide and everything came off that pig. Um, crazy, and it just uh, actually didn't soak it as long as I recommended. So the longer still the better. But um, and that pig, you know, or excuse me, that deer taking that hide off was like trying to take beef jerky from a Doberman Pinscher it was tough so pliers and things like that you can see how it's dark here where that oil from the hide got into the bone this is going to be the hardest part to get this clear and white um, this thing's just an oily mess anyway so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump that water and then I'm going to take the power washer and try and power wash all the visual nasty stuff off it before I boil so that my boil doesn't get all crappy
At this point, it's the same as everything I've ever said on Skull videos. Just bring it to a boil till that tissue gets loose, take your power washer and wash everything off. But make sure you're putting that nozzle in every little hole and orifice, blowing out all that nasty stuff. Same with your pig. Pull the teeth, put them in a basket. We're gonna boil those two, we don't want them to get lost. And make sure that you're putting water in through the tusk hole and it's blowing water out of the other holes and I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay, we got our skulls, our deadheads clean of all loose debris. We got them clean, but we don't have them white and we don't have them degreased. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these aside. This is a skull that's probably four or five years old that I did. And you can see naturally that it's just an oily skull. It's really old. There's very uh, little tissue holding those teeth in. So I'm going to take this thing and cut it in the saw in about four places and show you where that oil traps and stays. on the back of the head that rests right here. You physically can't get to this section right here without drilling it. So I drill a little hole and I can get this whole pocket of goop out of there. This is our dead head. This is all full of stuff. We're talking about this section right here. If you run a little hole in there with the drill, you'll be able to power wash all that stuff out. That's that whole void. And you can see naturally that that bone has oil in it. It's just how it is. It's how they're meant. It's how they're built. It's how God made them. Moving forward on that skull, there's the nasal cavity that I always rave about. Now this skull isn't like a one-shot clean skull. This skull I've done three or four times trying to get it white. And you can see there's still plenty of stuff in there. So that is the top of the, the middle of the head. All that crap. Now it doesn't create odor. It doesn't create stink. You can see this stuff here that's all left in there. It'll dry out, but it's never going to become pure white. Moving forward, there's the snout, right? The clean snout, and you can see how thin the bone structure is, and there's very little oil in that. So on the head, for the most part, this is that section that will oil up on you as a pig. Drill a pilot hole back here and wash that out, and then when you put it in peroxide, which is the ultimate degreaser, it will allow that to get out of the bone. Top of the head. Bottom of the jaw is very, very difficult as well because you can see how heavy it is. Now when I was showing you on the video those little holes, the tusk hole, this hole, and the hole in the back, everything is connected. Matter of fact, I cut this skull to show you what you're looking at. So from this tusk hole, it comes in, right? Then it ports out the side holes and then comes out this internal hole right here. There is no way to get that clean completely without removing it. So you wanna put your nozzle in here, put your nozzle in there and try and blow this clean because you're gonna oil in this section right here, the section you can't get to. Let's see if we can stack this together. Right, so that skull goes. You can see how that structure, that big tube is all full of like a big honeycomb looking product. 
There's where it comes out of that hole. There's where it vents all together. Now this is that 40% by volume peroxide mix. It is about 50% water, 50% peroxide. I'm gonna put the critters back in there and I'm gonna bring it to a boil and pull the deer out almost the second it comes to a boil. Then I'm gonna leave the pig in for a couple of days and let it soak, soak, soak. Now one of the things I meant to tell you is that peroxide is extremely light sensitive. So this is the one that I brought to a boil and I'm leaving it in there and you can actually see oil still coming out of this. See this here is all oil that's coming out of that skull. Now I've washed it and washed it and washed it. There ain't no way for me to get it any cleaner. So I'm just gonna let water and chemical leach that oil out and keep it covered so the sunlight doesn't wear out your peroxide. This particular batch of peroxide I've done 25 skulls with. So reuse it when you stop seeing skulls turn white. If they're a little bit dingy, your peroxide's dead. Dump it. Okay, just wrapping this video up on how to deal with a deadhead or an oily skull. So this is our deer that we finished. Looks pretty good. Well, you put it on a panel, it's got a tag on the back of it there. This, uh, this was pure white after the initial boil in the peroxide and it was good to go. Now the pig, I soaked for three days after the boil in peroxide. Then I pulled it out, gave it a little time to dry and I could see where I was oiling up here a little bit. Then I put it back in a pot of clear water and gave it a couple more days. I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good considering that it was uh, laying around for two years with hide on it and uh, it turned out real good. They both have a coat of mop and glow on them. Last little tidbit I want to leave you with. Skulls are not designed to be pure white. That's not what they look like naturally. Bone is not pure white. Um, if you've ever been into a, like a dinosaur museum, you see those old bones. Um, they're always dark brown or black or whatever and I know they've kind of petrified naturally but the whole white bone deal is from us being familiar with finding bones out that have been bleached in the sun and the integrity of that bone is not really there so yes that's where I got the name white bone that's what I've always tried to accomplish is that pure white look however mother nature has its own rules and if it's not pure white don't beat yourself up that's the nature of that particular skull anyway Thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help you in the future. If you have any questions, please shoot me a comment. I'll do anything I can to help.